Good afternoon and welcome everyone for today's webinar on how hot runner temperature controllers can positively impact your bottom line. Presented by Husky Technologies, we are thrilled to have you join us for this insightful session. This webinar presented by Manufacturing Today, which is a premium magazine from the ITP group. Today's webinar will focus on controllers for hot runners and explore questions such as how can a hot runner temperature controller heat up the mold faster while using less energy or how do mold heat up times impact productivity and the advantages of atrium controllers when integrated with an injection molding machine. We have with us today Alaji Malur, who is based in Singapore, has over 20 years of experience in mold making and 80 years with Husky Technologies, rising from the service engineer to accounts manager, business manager. He now leads hot, run hot runners and controllers in Asia South and Australia. Over to you, Balaji. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sujata. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, very much delighted and happy to be here again to focus on this webinar about controllers. We call it as Altanium controllers. So I would like to go one by one on a slides that is going to see how well it is going to impact the industry today of plastic injection molding. So basically, Altanium, what is this? Altanium is our signature product of the controllers that today we offer to the industry the most integrated platform for single point access to highly accurate and straightforward operation of temperatures, servo as well as well gate control. Today, we also have something called as R2, which is unique for the industry, which is I'm going to explain much more on the next coming slides. So these are basically to having on a sort of what I have on the different comparisons with controllers and out of the box kind of supports that we can have that the controller can produce. So today we have a kind of fast, precise, accurate, as well as kind of integrated to having different kind of branches. We have kind of matrix phi, delta phi, as well as neo phi. Neo phi is nothing but the previous one, which used to be launching as NEO2, that has been upgraded into NEO5. So today's agenda would be about, of course, the introduction, the productivity for using the controllers, the scheduled downtime, and kind of unscheduled downtime, and basically the complete summary of this controller introduction. In an injection molding industry, the bottom line is impacting about the economic conditions. So we have kind of labor shortages, supply chain disruptions, surging inflation, and also kind of how exactly to having to have our industry to making sure that everything is running on time. So these factors are kind of having a sort of inflation taking into consideration. So the factors have eroded the bottom lines leaving injection molders scrambling to offset the impact. As a result, everything should be under consideration, including the hot runners, which is some places it's kind of ignored. Uh, we focus more on machine, we focus more on mold, hot runners, and then controllers can be used of any kind. That's not true. That's what I'm going to explain it today. So the temperatures controllers are basically having can help to having a kind of impacting for you that will be overlooked when considering ways to improve your bottom line. The perception is that most hot runner temperature controllers are the same with very little differentiating ones from the other. This presentation for you, which I'm presenting, will explore the differences in performance and functionality and how these differences can impact your profitability as you are going to make the parts. It will also serve as a guide for determining which hot runner temperature controller technology to invest in, which is very, very important. So going into the areas of focus for improving profitability. So these are basically to produce more parts per startup, reduce energy consumption during startup, which is very critical to save energy. Then the electricity, electrically qualified molds before they are released to production. Use the controller as an advanced troubleshooting tool Unscheduled downtime, what are they? Detect faults and take corrective action to keep making parts. Interlock with the injection molding machine 
to making prevent damages of the mold, which are going to explain in detail. So when we're coming to productivity, improving profitability, I would like to highlight here a very important aspect, like you're seeing a PID, proportional, integral, and derivative. So the control in hot runner temperature, like basically all the hot runners temperature controllers are PID controlled. So P refers to proportional branch, I refers to integral branch, and D to derivative branch. So use of the present error past and the prediction of the future error to calculate the appropriate output. The design of the algorithm determines how much each PID branch contributes to the output. This is done by adjusting the gain term in each branch, which is called tuning the controller. So today we have kind of PID tuning. Let the controller to kind of allowing the controller to do its work. Like as I said in a previous slide, we have kind of inflation, the labor cost, and all these factors. It has to making sure that when we set the controller along with the hot runner, it has to be run easily without any trouble. So it's kind of easy, should require minimal to no setup and single touch activation. And even fast, should complete the tuning process in less than 10 minutes. Accurate, should the control of all zone within a plus or minus of 0 0.5 degree deviation at the minimum. So when you do auto-tuning, this is a possibility, but when you do it manually, it is not possible. So going into PID tuning itself is that we have kind of categories underdamped, overdamped, and optimal. So what is this? Aggressive heat up kind of time shortens heat up time, but significant overshoot happens on a stability period. Right? For example, if you're using so another time it shoots up and then there is a problem, fluctuations occur. Overdamped, it's a kind of gentle heat up, just takes its own time to make it, never applies full power to the heater, minimal to overshoot and stabilization period takes longer time to heat up. But whereas when we have optimal, similar to what we have today for altanium, is that applies full power to the heater with some dampening, shorter heat up time with minimal overshoot and stabilization period. This is a big advantage for us to making sure that all the heaters of the set temperature required is going to up on a fast scale. So here, when we are going to go with a comparison between a modular controller and as well as an integrated controller. So we are going to differentiate between an X versus Altanium. So what are these advantages? When it comes to feature, you're kind of having a modular controller to multiple parameter tuning, different heat up strategies, mold diagnostics, heat up protection, mold protection, single touch access to all zones and compact footprint. So basically we have made these combinations which are critical to the molding industry. None of these things will be available in a modular controller. Whereas in an integrated controller on a single unit like Altanium, we have all of them as sticked, which is very critical to the industry today. So going into the very importance of deliver optimal control with more auto tuning choices on heat up time. If you look at the graph on the two ones that is on the left, that is one to three possible auto tuning results versus the 16.5M possible auto tuning results. The screens are that it's basically PID is derived into kind of zones that heat up times taking PID to fast, to medium, to slow. Whereas in a control with multiple parameters tuning, it's all integrated to make into 16.5 million possible auto tuning results. It's so fast that's going to take to making sure that all are done in a right combination to heat up in a right and faster way. So here, if you look at the screens that are the two arrow marks that you are seeing, and also the two roundness that is happening to making sure that this is very critical to have the fixed PID values that a zone can fall into, resulting in the difference between slow heat up times and optimal heat up times. So now, Altanium mold controllers, best out of the box performance that I had told it in the previous slide. So this out of the box previous slides that I have put up into a situation there, it's a kind of hot runner temperature, it's effectiveness and efficiency. So what are they? 
based on the factory default settings that we make in the factory before it is being shipped out to our customer, it is kind of to making sure that all these things are tuned, hitting up fault identifications and fault recovery. All these things are taken into consideration before it is being shipped for easy startup procedures. So here we are going to split into kind of differentiates between control number three and we call control number one, that would be Altenium controller that is on the left hand side, uh, sorry, right hand side of the screen. So here, if you look into that one, we have kind of in a manner, I go by step by step in this one to differentiate between why it is so important to having a controller like Altenium. In manufacturing, time is money. So equipment needs to be effective as possible out of the box. So molders basically do not have time to fine tune equipment. It should perform optimally without user interactiveness. So you went, and then on to going, having kind of factory default setting that has been set up by our factory. Advantages, if it is done right, which are going to do it definitely. So allows the controller to be as autonomous as possible. Provide the best performance with the least effort are effective for all types of molds and applications, provide re repeatable results. So here I would like to touch base a little bit, all effective, all types of molds and applications, meaning to say that we go with engineering, plastics, medical industry, food industry, packaging, flip top closures, all these things, it has its own importance when it comes to heat up temperatures and its performance. So this is exactly that factory will taking care of to tune them accordingly and make it up. User modified setting disadvantages. So here I would like to just say about the required when default settings are not capable achieving acceptable performance. So here also it is requiring assistance from manufacturer or advanced knowledge of controller to determine what needs adjusting. Retain through tribal knowledge, not easy to replicate if different molds require similar fix or if mold setup is lost. So I would like to make some kind of just the slide for you to understand, taking some time for you to see the graph, what exactly it means. The graph itself is pretty much self-explanatory. I feel that the heat up time, the duration it takes on all zones to reach within one degree deviation of set point. So from the power to the temperature setting. At the same time, the stability range, the duration from when all zones are controlling within a plus or minus one deg degree deviation of set point. So it's a kind of pretty much going evenly then into making it up on a stabilization time, time as well. Look at here. So if you're looking at the time on the left-hand side of the screen, you have one graph, the time heat up taken is the value followed by the second one of stabilization time. How exactly we having it, it's called a soaking time. So that can be implemented on the controller. So the time is important because it ensures all zones are under control and allows the hot runner to soak so that the resin is at optimal viscosity. So in other words, when you are going to charge the machine, when you purge the resin, everything is set up on a particular resin, and then on to making sure that before it shoots into the injection molding, so that's the hot runner, the hot runner will making sure that the soaking time is very important to have that viscosity to be purged into your cavities so that you don't have to flash or you're going to those short shots and et cetera. So coming back, the differentiate between that we are showing the comparison between controller three and the Altanium. So heat up after auto tuning complete, the kind of takes 52 minutes heat up based on our study that and stabilization time is just reach set point. And our Altanium controller has taken a kind of time 42% faster than the competitor controller. Same mold, so the resin is the same and the process setup and condition. So in other words, if you're comparing the exact machine, the same mold and the hot runner being used and the, when you're using a controller, 
between alternium and the computator, this is what you're going to gain. So heat up and stabilization time, how exactly it is quantified? The payback calculation is difference in heat up and stabilization time versus the alternium. So a measurement of how many more parts can be made per startup. So in this case, it's a kind of calculation that we have done working on our computators was us, which having two different machines of the same kind, same kind of mold, same cavities, all those things. And then we made this test to having it today, what you're presenting to the industry. So that would be kind of alternium will have 2,752 more parts per startup. Meaning to say, each time that you set up the mold, the faster rate of the temperature that's going to rise maintains the stability. Then with the soaking time and the right viscosity, you can start to inject the product to making sure that you gain that much amount of extra plastic parts, which are good. So give an example about inputs for payback calculation. So we have a kind of a syringe tube that's having cavities per cycle of 32 drops with a part weight of 0 0.65. The resin cost is about dollar two. The cycle time here is calculated, it's around 13 seconds. Startup time, minutes to set point plus minutes to stabilize. We have a controller number one is 30, a control number two is 52. So startup time per week is one. Difference in startup time minutes and the controller number one versus controller two is 22. And your profit is going to have based on selling price is about $0.0633. So I will explain to you what is makes sense when it comes to more clear on profits here. So when it comes to the parts per month, the controller three has produced 364,000 kind of parts. The profit per month is 23,000 and annual profit is 276. Whereas if you use the same Altanium, your profit is going to increase by this many amount here. So it's a kind of 285,000 versus 276,000 is what is the price that you have. And in turn, you're going to have an annual profit of $9,000, which is pretty much you're going to have on a scale of a 12 zone or 24 zones kind of controllers, you're recovering it back within the time. You can have a kind of free, another controller I can say. The manifold heater longevity on an Altanium has a distant advantage. Like basically a full power is delivered in a fast, smooth manner, never allows power output to go 0% while heating up. It's very, very critical. So all these things you can able to see that one, these explanations that what I'm given is on the facts that you are going to see it on HMI when I complete this slide and you are buying one system of ours and compare with our competitors. So circuit test qualifies the heating circuit, controls fast detection alerts, takes corrective action immediately. R2, which is very critical, I explained, it is our latest technology on this Altanium, delivers smooth, consistent power to all the heaters. So here we are kind of manifold heater. So why we are taking this explanation as a manifold heater itself? So this longevity, a power delivery method that should be kind of avoided when you are having it. So in other words, when you look at it, the extended on-off power delivery to these manifold zones can lead to premature heater failure. So it is important to making sure that assumptions of average system heat up versus calculated heat of life. So average system heat up once per day, five days per week, 50 weeks per year for a total of 250 heat ups per year. Average heat up time is about 30 minutes that you are calculating. So here the calculated heat of life is 1.4 to 4.2 years when we have it's used. So in summary, the electrical heaters have a finite life, but when properly designed for hot runner applications, we have a properly controlled 
should last for 10 to 15 years or even longer. Reducing this time period for 1.4 to 4.2 years of life is significant. So it's very, very important to making sure that with a life of 1.4 to 5 years around versus 10 to 15 years, which will give up with the more life. Today, when you're giving a mole cycle of 4 million, 8 million, whatever it is, definitely the heaters will be standing tall for the next almost close to 1.5 decades. So here we touch base a little bit about Altenium R2 with Unistart and Alta Start. So we have named this one purely because which our new in the industry with a technological advantages for us, that these zones are basically classified and grouped, applied power to only to the slowest responding groups first. Faster reacting groups are then powered, and then it will be kind of onto the optimal time to go reach that point simultaneously. Classifying zones into groups and staggering when they are powered to achieve lowest energy usage, faster heat up times. What are they? This is basically when you're setting grouping into hot tips, or nozzle tips, manifold, and sprue. So the first thing that's going to heat up to take a longer time will be the manifold. So once it's going to reach up its threshold of stabilizing and coming to this, then automatically the tip's going to start up. And then all the you can save that amount of time to making sure that these are energy savings as well as and then the sprue eventually together. So here, when we have the Startups, all those things I explained, the slowest reacting, the fastest temperatures, all those things that are classified into four categories that, that I explained to you now. So I just have to take time to making sure that for you to understand how well that R2 behaves. Once you group them into categories, tips, manifold, sprue, manifold is the one which is going to take the first one, reach up its time, followed by tips and the sprue. So here we have a kind of R2 with Unistart with a 30% less energy usage per startup. So only control solution to successfully auto-tune all moles tested. Up to 42% faster time, reduced residency time for low volume resin, less heater stress through smooth uniform power delivery. Most precise and accurate control with 0.45 Fahrenheit variation from set point. So here we talk about scheduled downtime, preventive maintenance. So when it comes to preventive maintenance, that maximizing uptime and reliability with preventive maintenance, perform preventive maintenance effectively following proper maintenance procedures, advanced troubleshooting can qualify a mold before it is returned to production. Electrical faults can be found and fixed before hanging the mold. So in other words, we can do a kind of mold test just at the tool room that all the detections of a problem on a hot runner could ever will be triggered onto an interface that we have and we can able to fix it. So when it is going to the machine, you have no problems, but a faster startup. So amperage and leakage measurements, a critical functionality of effective fault detection. So this is also a very important factor that we having reduced unscheduled downtime. The mold assembly is prone to production stoppages due to electrical components failure. You can have kind of sometimes if you are going to close a cavity plate and if there is a pinch on a heater or a thermocouple and it's kind of, it can detect on the shop floor to making sure that these quick findings and issue to highly accurate, precise current and leakages measurement devices integrated into the controller. So it makes a lot of advantage to having to test on the shop floor at the tool room so that it is everything is tested, it is having a big advantage for the Altanium. Here, I would like to go with a heater circuit test as I explained to you just now, like how exactly this is being done. So we have a kind of different level one, level two, level three, and level four categories. So we are kind of amperage and leakage sensors measurements. The controller applies calculations for this and measurements to determine if there is a fault. 
So it is a fault is detected, the controller presents the user with comprehensive steps for diagnosing and correcting the issue. So we have a statement to try this, 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 and eventually can able to fix very fast. So here, I would like to have a kind of explanation to you on integrated fault resolution guide. So all these things that you're seeing on the screen, it's pretty much we are adapting in the industry today. We have the controller, we have the mold, we have the ohm reading meter, and we have the everything is fixed. So this guidance results in more faster permanent resilience of issues, reducing costly downtime. Instead of going into each one of them, using an Altanium controller, all these things can be checked upon using an Altanium. Mold diagnostics, a window into the mold. So it's very important that when we do a new setup or a new mold has come, or it's a kind of system that we are going to refurbish and we are going to fix it, the tests for voltage delivery to each heater, thermal response and correct, electrical wiring, open reverse or pinched thermocouples, open heater, kilowatt user per mold, resistance measurement for each heater, zone to zone thermal analysis. So when you do all these tests, you get all these benefits like faster and more accurate diagnostics of mold problems, accurate accounting of power usage, soft rewiring of miswired molds increased uptime, heater failures detection, and mold leaks detection as well that has been having. So mold leaks, I'm going to explain to you about why is that advantage, especially when it comes to nozzle tips using ART2. This is exactly I was referring to plastic leak detection, which is probably the only one in the industry that we have so far to making sure that if our average output of the heater is calculated and stored, an alarm is triggered if average power output exceeds a present threshold. How it is done? There are only a couple of aspects that can happen like this. One, there could be a water leak in a mold, a cavity leaking because of O-rings or not tightened properly or whatever it is, and then eventually that drops into the tip. And this will be kind of fluctuating waviness within the tolerance of system that we have given. The second aspect is very closely plastic material leak. If this leak is happening and kind of triggering to having the power that's been given, and if within that range of tolerance, it will alarm as well so that you can easily detect the leaking of material and you can save many of the components by doing so and also the downtime. So this is a big, big advantage you going with R2 and making it up into different zones, that is tips, manifold, and sprue, wherein our engineers, experts can able to make it up when you have one in the field to make these ones, which is advantageous for you. The possible causes for change in power output and alarm, like as I mentioned, plastic filled in nozzle bore and sinks heat away, mold cooling as leaking and nozzle bore. This function is seemingly the same on all controllers that support this feature. However, fluctuations in supply voltage may not be considered. This is a big advantage that we have. So plastic leak detection of a basic operation. So plastic filling the gate area can act as an insulator against the effects of mold, cooling, dislodge, the thermocouple and the nozzle body. So the ones which are on the blue is the water cooling that you're looking into. So plastic can also act as bridge to transfer heat to steel surrounding the nozzle. So these conditions will result in this kind of variation that you're seeing that the graph is moving on. Alarm is triggered, warning of a possible leak. So when the stability is constantly being within the CPK, if it is going above that, it is pretty much assured that something is wrong of a plastic leak and the controller stops so is the machine. So when we have a 5% drop in supply voltage will result in 3% increase of power to the heater. If the threshold value are not adjusted to compensate for this drop, a false alarm can trigger. Example, you can able to see the screen which is stable now. It is going up and then eventually supply voltage control drops and alarm threshold doesn't adjust for the drop in voltage. A false alarm is triggered. So supply voltage is very, very important for us here. Then on going into another scenario, 
we are having a controller that is having moving into supply 240 volts, which is pretty much stable. No alarm is triggered. It is within the range of that. So the controller will supply voltage compensation automatically, adjust alarm threshold, when a change in voltage occurs, preventing the false alarm. So no leak in gate area, so that the voltage drop affects all zones in group equally. So the controller knows this is not a leak. It's very important. So it will not give a false alarm like what it was on the previous slide that has been shown. So here, I would like to have a kind of unscheduled downtime maintaining productivity. What is this? So here, if you are having a kind of controller, auto follow mode, I told you, and with the automatic manual control mode. So it's a kind of having an auto control mode, which is having a lot of the power output of the good zone is mirrored and followed by the bad zones, wherein fail zone is set a fixed duty cycle based on its average historical power output. So when I having a closed loop digital interlocks mitigate risk of mold damage and resin degradation, what is this? We call it as something called as an IO option for the controller integrating with the machine. So in this case, it will kind of output that is being put to the injection molding machine connects to single injection. Any of the injection molding can be integrated using with an IO option, which comes with a package that you're going to buy on a controller. There's a big advantage is that it connects to a single injection molding to stop it from cycling if the controller stops heating the mold. For whatever reason, if the machine not reaching its soak time, the temperatures of the nozzles is not heated up, the machine is not going to shoot the plastic for you. It's a big advantage for you eventually. So, Remote standby input, for example, connects to a cynical signal of the IMM that automatically lowers the temperature of the hot runner system to prevent resin degradation in the mold if the IMM stops cycling. For example, if you are running a polycarbonate, clear, for example, we all know that anything of a four minutes of more time of polycarbonate resin, which is having kind of time, it tends to change its properties. So if you are using an alternium controller integrated with a closed loop to the injection molding machine, this will automatically bring the controller to standby mode and it will not degrade the resin when the resin is in the barrel. This is exactly an advantage. So when you're having the PCM operates base system for zone settings, it is having a kind of abort occurs and then the system settings, all these things can be put up on the machine when you are going to have them as a screen like this. So it's a prevent kind of, if you look upon the screen, how exactly it works. You can see the video that is having kind of simulation that how exactly the standby time runs and eventually it comes to standby. It turns to blue. I would like to put some of the medical component, which is very, very critical in the industry to making sure that we have the right temperature for every application and resin that we have. It's kind of instances of material burning due to prolonged residence time. This is where we have used a PC, as I mentioned in my previous slide, a SABIC solution is integrating with a remote standby interlock with having a kind of auto ejector component and then stop to extend period of time. So eventually it lowers the hot runner temperatures when it is having a solution of stoppage time of more than four minutes, however, that you set it, then it comes to standby mode, which will save the resin from degrading. So here, when you do that, we can able to, or proven to the customer of ours, that customers save a 25,000 plus annual savings of cleaning costs and more than four plus weeks of production gains from them. So just integrating the hot runner controllers to the machine have this one for us. So here we have a kind of hot runner temperature controllers are not all the same. You have to please understand that one. Why it is so significant using an alternium will always make productivity more and it will more profits for the people who are stakeholders on this one. A controller tuning algorithm has a direct impact on performance. A sophisticated troubleshooting tool that can diagnose faults and guide how to fix the issue to minimize downtime. 
a properly configured controller can overcome all the failure modes that would normally require a cavity to be lost or shut the process time. So in this, I concluding my presentation for this one, and I'm very much available for you to seek any question and answers for this one, hoping that it has helped you in this webinar today. Thank you, Balaji. Thank you. That was a very insightful uh, in, insightful presentation on Altinium controllers. Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, to begin with, what are the benefits of using hot runner system in injection molding? Well, uh, this question is pretty related to kind of uh, hot runners. Uh, I, I can explain this one. It is that if you are using a cold runner or a semi-hot runner or kind of thing, the resin that you are going to lose is on the runner. So the using a hot runner on a direct gating is always benefiting that you save the amount of resin that's going to be either recycled or scrap or whatever it is. That's a big advantage using a hot runner. And most importantly, you have a wider process window, a better balancing of the mold that is not going to having kind of difference in short shot, or you're going to have flash or part weight difference and all those things because a hot runner can able to balance, especially I'm proud to say that Husky Injection Molding as a company for hot runners can able to do that. We guarantee anywhere between 90 to 95% of balancing at only fill on certain applications of the systems. So that is the advantage that you have when you're using a hot runner system. Hello? The second, uh, the second yeah. question is, uh, what factors should be considered when selecting a hot runner system for your molding needs? Uh, my apologies, can you repeat that question? What factors mm -hmm. should be considered when selecting a hot runner system for your molding needs? Well, uh, it's a good question. Uh, basically, most importantly, you have to see it's all application specific, like hot runners are used if you're going to run high volume parts. And second thing is that how much of saving cycle time is a significant saving when you're making products. Another aspect mm -hmm. is that you're going to have the industry, whether it is medical or closures or packaging or, or different kind of industries that happen. So all those things, it is having a kind of advantages that you are going to happen, wherein our team who are into different segments can able to support in case if it is needed, you can reach out to us and we will get back to you on those advantages on more clearly. Okay. Um, a request to the audience, if you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A box. Uh, Balaji is available for answering all your queries on that. Moving forward, Balaji, the next question is, does the controller rem remember the tuning or does it retune every time the mold is started? If I understand this question clearly, let's assume that you have a mold and you mm -hmm. have a controller. And this has been set on a particular XYZ mold has been tuned to this controller. Mm -hmm. And each time you're bringing down and after a week or a month or when the production is required, you're going to set up again. There is no necessary because you are going to recall that mold file and you are going to incorporate it into heat up zones. At that point of time, it is not necessary for any kind of tuning. The tuning is required only when, if there is a change in nozzle heaters changing or a kind of thermocouple or anything like that. At that time, it is always recommended to go for ART to tune them and which will be very fast on a specific zone. Today, we are going to have that specific zone to be tuned as well, but in actual recommendation, it is always better for every kind of cycle that maintenance that you bring the mold and you are going to set up on a, after some time, it is recommended to do another tuning that will take not long time to making sure that all the heaters are performing well and you get that record so that it is a better way to do that one. How can I keep uh, from shooting into the cold mold or flashing the mold? Well, uh, I did say that Husky's controller, that is Altenium, mm -hmm. has a big advantage in this particular question that you are raised up is basically mm -hmm. like you're not going to shoot a cold resin into the mold purely because 
the shooting part or the injection unit will never purge the plastic into the hot runner until there is a communication between the controller and to the machine that I'm ready for injecting. So after reaching the set point and the viscosity, which has been having that enough time for whatever the so soaking time that I put, depending, depending on the resin, once mm -hmm. that's triggered, you get a green light, only then the machine will allow to push the plastic so that you are having a big advantage. You don't do short shot, you don't do flashing, nothing. So long your, your shot size is intact. Which type of component use inside hot runner for stabilization of temperature? Uh, sorry, again? Which type of component is used inside the hot runner for stabilization of temperature? Well, uh, if I understand this question clearly, it is like the components that we use on the heaters, these are all of standard components that has come like heaters, thermocouples, uh, manifold heaters and it detections. So all these things are pretty much clearer to communicate one another with the Altanium controller. So if I understand this question clearly, this one should be kind of, these are the components that are standard components, which are very important for mm -hmm. the controller. And most importantly to having the thermocouples, how exactly it is been, because thermocouples comes with different types. It can be J, it can be K and all those. So whenever there in most cases, if it is a machine, the thermocouple could be of K type. But when it comes to hot runners of Husky and the Altanium, it will all be on a J type. So likewise, these are the things that importance to having for communication so that I am not thinking that if I have a controller, I should not be confused what's happening between the hot runner and the controller. Yeah. Is it possible to retrofit Altidium R2.0 on high pet 500T of 144 cavity hot runner? Yes, it is. We can able to work on it to making it, if it is using a dedicated controller of separately for the 144 PET system. Okay, but because in most cases for the PET system, you don't use thermocouples. Mm -hmm. uh, you just a direct heat up setup. So it's just a percentage value that's going to take, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not wrong. So it's not, uh, art is very important for the ones which are integrated for a thermocouple. And then it is integrating for a percentage stability wise, it will definitely produce good stable performance when it comes to percentage output. Yeah. Does Husky have uh, cavity pressure monitoring? Uh, we don't use, we can work with uh, together. You're, if I'm not wrong, you're talking about pressure transducers. We work for the requirement when we manufacture a mold and if it required, it's integrating. So it is, this question can be more explained on a kind of mold related issues. If somebody is important, they can brise up this one by an email. I can able to get back to them in the right way. Can, uh, does this un, uh, ungrounded thermocouples affect control? Does using ungrounded thermocouples affect control? I wouldn't say ungrounded thermocouples affect. The difference between a grounded thermocouple and ungrounded thermocouple is that a grounded thermocouple will sense faster to heat mm -hmm. up faster. But whereas an ungrounded thermocouple takes longer time. So the application that you use the thermocouple. It's kind of, you know, what is a thermocouple? To check the temperature. So how fast it detects the temperature of setting. So if using an ungrounded thermocouple, it takes longer time to sense the, the time taken to detect. Whereas a grounded thermocouple will respond faster. That's exactly we are using and we recommend to use it. That's the basic Bottom line is that we want to having it faster detection. So that's mm -hmm. why the advantages having a grounded thermocouple is always preferred. What is the difference between NEO2 and NEO5 controllers? Uh, everything is the same except for the HMI. We have a larger screen, more things to look into that one, and more features to look upon problem detection. The H NEO2 is kind of a shorter ones that we had initially put up. And now we mm -hmm. upgraded for those ones to replacing from Neo2 to Neo5. Uh, can anyone operate the controller or uh, you need specially skilled people? 
No, anybody can operate a controller, but it's recommended to use a kind of responsible people to having them with a unique passwords and user ID that we give. And not everybody go and play with it and uh, having some problems would be an issue. So it is we give it a kind of understanding working with the mold maker or molders or stakeholders that who will be responsible for what. Uh, so based on those passwords and username, they can mm -hmm. able to use it and uh, each one will have its own kind of setting values that they can able to use them. Okay, great. Uh, one last question. Uh, from my existing controller, Husky, how best in cost-wise and how to calculate the ROI for it? Return of investments, when you're using Husky, I'm pretty sure that you're already having a good advantage. But uh, if you are having any issues with respect to the competitors that you are, if your questions arise on that one, you can able to let us know. And because our presentation is very much stating that Husky's controllers are best performing in the industry and you are going to save and this is what is in your dollar or rupees or pounds or whatever thing. But if there is any kind of, you can always reach out to us on comparison requirement. I can get back to you on this one as well. Mm -hmm. I'm unable to answer this uh, in a proper way. My apologies on that. Thank you, Balaji. Thank you for providing uh, insights into the new Altenium uh, controller plus answering the questions of the audience. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time out to uh, attend this webinar. I hope you have gained insights. Whatever questions you have, you can write directly to Balaji. He's available to answer all the questions that you have. Thank you once again. Thank you uh, Balaji and thank you audience.